If there's one question I get more than any other when I hand a reptile to somebody, does it bite? Well, that's a great question. So I'm gonna go over the top five reptiles that are least likely to bite you to make you more comfortable with these amazing scaly beasts. My name's Adam, this is Chicken, you're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Chicken is a beautiful gecko, and one that I can pick up and not worry about too much. Now, of course, crested geckos are coming in at number five. I wanna mention something before we get too deep in the video. Anything with a mouth can bite. So I'm not saying 100% chance these things will never bite you. There is not an animal on this planet that you could say that about. However, I've owned these animals for a very long time, and these are the ones that I feel most comfortable with just handing to somebody who I know for sure is not gonna get bit when I hand this animal to them. So, crested geckos, being that they are of this size, even if they did bite you, it's not a big deal. Very unlikely that they'll even draw blood if they would bite you, which is so unbelievably rare. These guys are gonna be more afraid of you than you are of them, along with almost all reptiles. But the eyelash gecko, which is what they're called sometimes, the crested gecko is one of those ones that really doesn't wanna bite you at all. They're kind of derpy, they're not really very skittish unless they're babies that are unsocialized, but if you get an animal that you put in any time at all with, generally they're gonna be pretty happy to hang out with you and you don't have to worry too much about them being bitey or flighty. That is my favorite type of reptile. Now why they're a good pet quickly, of course there is a whole care guide you can watch right here if you choose to, but crested geckos are probably the easiest reptile in the world to care for in my opinion. I always put them at number one on the best beginner reptile list and that's just because, well, they are beautiful. And they eat a powdered diet and they don't need high temperatures and the humidity is easy to keep. Just overall, you can keep them in a bioactive enclosure with a cleanup crew, never have to worry about cleaning up poop if you do it that way. You feed them once every two or three days, which is a powder diet, and then throw in crickets once every two weeks, and that's it. In my opinion, the easiest reptile in the world, you can easily go on a weekend vacation as long as your lights and everything are automated and not have to worry about this animal at all. You don't need a pet sitter for this guy. Plus, like, look how freaking cute these guys are. Also, just be careful, because if they lose their tails, they don't, they don't regrow. All right, let's move on to number two, or four. Actually, that's how the countdown works. Number four, corn snakes. I love corn snakes. I know I gave them a bad rap because I had bad experiences, but of all the corn snakes that I've ever held, I would say 95% of them are perfectly fine just to creep and crawl all over you and you don't have to worry about them biting you at all. Now, there is an exception. If you are someone who's like, well, I wanna get a corn snake, but I really, really don't wanna get bit by snakes, well, get yourself an adult. And the reason is, if it's an adult that is socialized, well, then you're not gonna have to worry about it being bitey and flighty like a baby might be. Now, if a baby bites you, it's not really gonna hurt you. You're probably not even gonna notice it. A baby, you might have to tame down, and taming down animals like that means sometimes you have to get a bite or two. So instead, just go to a breeder, explain exactly what you're looking for. Maybe they'll give you a retired breeder, which just means a breeding animal that is maybe too old to breed anymore, five or six, a lot of the times they'll kind of take them off of the breeding plan. And that doesn't mean that they're about to die. These animals can live 15 years easily, but I recommend getting one that is well socialized. And these animals do live a long time, 15, 20 years, if you take care of them really, really well. You don't need a huge enclosure. We're talking about 120 gallons. Again, care guide up here if you wanna watch it. And of course, because these animals are so beautiful and they come in so many morphs and patterns, there's basically something for everybody. Easy to care for, not gonna bite you most of the time, really great feeders, and of course, they are absolutely fantastic to look at. I love corn snakes, they're one of the best pets out there, especially for somebody who might be on the beginner level side or that level of the spectrum and like not expert. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say let's move on to number three. Number three, that's right, the leopard gecko. Now I'm actually gonna make this a double entry. Leopard geckos or African fat tails because in my opinion, in my experience, they're basically the same in terms of their willingness to be handled and not be too upset about it. Now this is Alora the leopard gecko. I've actually never shown her on the channel. She's one of the amazing breeders that we're gonna use this year to make some amazing, beautiful babies. I'm really excited about it. But the reason that I like to make leopard geckos because, well, I can move them pretty easily because they're so popular and they make such great pets 
for most people. Now, this animal here, I'm not worried about taking a stab at me. I'm not worried about it at all. Leopard geckos, in my experience, have only been bitten a handful of times, and we're talking about by males who smell a female on me. Now, this is a female. She's well-fed. She hasn't been paired up yet. There's no reason for her to be skittish, upset, angry, which they're really not. It's more defensive than anything else. But either way, these guys here, aside from the fact that they're not going to bite you, are super duper easy to care for. We're talking about put them in a 40 gallon enclosure if you really want to give it the best life. Care guide up here. I'll just put a care guide for all of them. Why not? And because they come in such amazing patterns and colorations, and there's so many of them, there's going to be one for you. And of course, they are crepuscular, which means they're going to be uh, active during dawn, dusk, and really, in my experience, active sometimes in the middle of the night or the middle of the day. They're kind of up whenever, but they're going to be around the enclosure. They're not going to hide too, too much. And especially when there's food, it's super fun to watch them feed because this really cool tail back here, they're going to wiggle it around when they see it. They get all excited, kind of like a dog, right? And then they kind of chomp down on the feeder item. But that's the fun part. It's so cute. It's not scary or intimidating. Like some snakes, it might look intimidating to people for them to grab a hold of a prey item and wrap it up. These guys don't do that. They kind of grab it with their eyes closed and then that's it. it. It's really adorable in my experience, kind of like a baby biting a spoon. You go, here comes the airplane. You know what I mean? So I, I, I think it's adorable. And being that they don't need a huge enclosure and they don't really need a ton to keep them happy, I think they just make great pets. And the same goes for African fat tail geckos. African fat tail geckos are very similar. They like it a little bit more humid, but otherwise the care guides are almost interchangeable. They eat the same way, they eat the same things, they act the same way, they breed the same way. They're almost the same animal with a different coloration, a different pattern. And of course, if you wanna get scientific about it, no, they're not the same. What I mean is from the perspective of someone who's looking to keep a pet, they're almost interchangeable. I love African fat tail geckos and I especially love leopard geckos. They're one of the coolest reptiles out there. And I mean, the care guide also that I made was one of the most just cinematic videos ever. It's just fun to watch, so enjoy. Number two, Schneider skinks. I haven't really talked about these guys recently. Just, I don't really know why, to be honest with you. They're literally right beside me. It's the closest enclosure when I film these videos. And they're super sluggish and super cool. And in my opinion, one of the most underrated animals on the planet, not reptiles, just in general, the most underrated pets. Whether you like reptiles or not, these guys, in my opinion, don't even act like other lizards. They don't act like snakes. They act like something of their own. I can't even really describe it. Now, when I'm talking about Schneider skinks, I'm talking about maybe the most placid skink that there is out there. They're, of course, not the biggest animal in the world, so I wouldn't recommend just handing this to a child and saying, have a good time, like you would with, well, I mean, supervise all animals. What I'm trying to say is they might be a little bit more fragile than something like a ball python or a bearded dragon or anything like that. Now, I'm not worried about this animal at all. They're not gonna jump off of me. They're not super fast. They're not super squirmy, but it feels very weird when they're trying to climb up the back of your bald head. So, oh, it feels like one of those like, you know, like those, it's so weird. And you can cohab them. Of course, do your research on how to cohab them. I'm not saying just throw them all in there all willy-nilly, but definitely they do really well if you keep females together, or if you wanna keep maybe a male and a female together, that's what I do, and they do really, really well almost all the time. Not to mention their beautiful coloration, and I think although I made their size seem like something that's not uh, the best, maybe for someone who is an adult, but just getting into reptiles, you want something that doesn't take up a huge footprint, and what I keep these guys in is something that's three feet, long by one foot high by 18 inches deep. So it takes up almost no space at all. We're talking about less than six square feet. And in my opinion, that is a big thing for a lot of keepers because a lot of keepers don't want something that's gonna take up lots and lots of room. And that's kind of a deal breaker. For example, that's why some people get small dogs instead of medium or large sized dogs. And it works the same way with a lot of reptiles. I think their little personalities are unmatched. They're unlike any reptile that I keep. I honestly can't even believe that a skink this size can be this handleable, this calm, this docile, and just so much fun to watch. And you could, of course, set them up in something bigger, but because they're a more arid loving species, they don't like too much humidity, you're not gonna have to worry about like a ton of plants and things like that. You could do succulents and stuff, but you're gonna basically hardscape their enclosure rather than kind of scape it more like, I don't know, a crested gecko or dart frogs or something like that. They're insectivores, they're easy to care for. I don't know why I'm going to care guide. You can literally watch the care guide. Again, guess where? 
right there. Give them a shot. If you've never thought about Schneider skinks before, I highly recommend it. Not the same as a Berber skink. Berber skinks are a little bit bigger, but Schneider skinks or Berber skinks, in my opinion, coming at number two and one of my favorite species that I will always keep. And I think a lot of people should too. And number one, least likely to bite you animal. Yeah, of course, it's a bearded dragon. Now, this is my main man right here. This is Diamond. And Diamond is the co-host of the channel because he's so easy to work with. I don't have to worry about this guy being flighty or bitey. Now he was just under his hot spot after eating a bunch of crickets. So he's pretty warm. He might be a little fired up. And by fired up, I mean just wants to be active. He doesn't want to bite me. He never has. I've had bearded dragons, not my whole life, but my entire reptile keeping career since I was 18 years old. And I've never been bit by one. They've never even threatened to bite me. Nothing like that. Of course, again, there are outliers, but I've picked up bearded dragons at every expo, every pet shop. I've never ever been bitten by one or felt like there was any sort of threat. Now, the reason they're number one is because in my opinion, they're the least likely to bite you of all the reptiles that I've ever had or ever kept or ever touched, but also they make really great pets. This is a substantial sized lizard in comparison to a leopard gecko, schneider skink, whatever. And because of that, they're less fragile. So you don't have to worry about them maybe, you know, taking too much of a tumble, don't drop your bearded dragon. However, I think that because they're a bigger size, they can handle maybe not the most gentle handling, kind of like regular, I could just kind of grab them like this, don't have to worry about it, it's fine. Where with a leopard gecko, it'd be like, oh, come on little baby, you know what I mean? So I just feel like, although you're gonna be gentle with them, if you hand them to a kid who's maybe not the most gentle thing and you're supervising, they're going to be able to withstand things without getting aggravated a little bit easier than something like a leopard gecko or a schneider skink or something that's a little bit smaller. So less delicate and of course a more arid loving species as well. They like their humidity pretty low. Care guide here. Just made this one. It's very new, brand new last month. So again, you don't have to worry about a planted enclosure if you don't want to do something like that. Much easier in my opinion. You're going to use a high wattage halogen bulb, which is going to suck out humidity anyway. So it's almost like, I don't know, zero effort to make them the way that they need to be as long as you put in the effort at the beginning and you change the lights when you need to change them and you feed them you know every three days something like that you feed them a bunch of greens feed them a salad then you feed them bugs every like once a week or every you know six days or every five days whatever your feeding schedule is just really really simple and another one if everything is automated oh it's just the skinks going crazy over there monkey tail skinks are not they sometimes they bite if everything is automated, you can go away for a week, you know, send someone to check to make sure your light didn't burn out or whatever, but there's not gonna be too much caretaking. It's not like a dog, oh, feed it twice a day and make sure you give it belly rubs on every hour. And if it's a full moon, make sure you rub its butt counterclockwise. Like you don't have to worry about that with bearded dragons. So my favorite reptile in my collection is Diamond, just cause he's so easy, he's so fun. Most of the time he's chill. And then today he's a little bit, uh, crazy because he's warm but either way what do you think the least bitey animal is let me know in the comments section below i'd love to know do you want to see the top five most bitey reptiles in my collection i'd be happy to share it with you if you want might get bit in that one either way thank you so much for hitting subscribe hitting the like button doing lots of videos like this one and as always a special thanks to the patreon supporters you guys are freaking amazing love you guys you guys get discounts on the merch videos early discounts on a whole bunch of different stuff and you're gonna know about the crazy breeding project that we started last week. We're gonna have so many babies this year. All that for as little as a dollar a month. And because we do videos on Mondays and Thursdays, that means I'll see you in the next one.